Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Magic and Factory, written by Terran on Air. It was a factory world. The grounds were of flat concrete, and the high-rise walkways were of steel. There was a constant hum of electricity in the air that could only be noticed when the power went out, and eventually was as silent as death. It was made by the humans. Rather, more religious folk believed the humans had a hand in building it, while all other peoples were made for their respective areas and tailored by the greater spirits to work and toil away at their specified works. The humans had no place they specifically belonged. It wasn't that they didn't have skills and abilities with specific purpose in mind. It was more like the world itself was built by their own hands. So everything in it was something they could be found working on. They did not hail the spirit in the boiler lands the same as the buildings did. No, their relationship was more familiar, more familial than that. They showed little difference to the spirit mother of the canteen lands. They would pay her their small tributes and take their edibles as they relaxed for a few short minutes before getting back to their strange works. They didn't have our reverence. They didn't seem to have our loyalty either. The humans weren't seen often, but we did talk with each other about them. People had their stories. They weren't so foreign as to be mythical creatures or something out of legend, but they were seldom enough to spark rumors and things. I didn't believe half of it, until I met one myself. I worked in the candy forges of the Eaterlands for a faction under the guidance of the spirit named Hublub. There we made his Hublubs to be gifted to the Mother of Sprites and distributed from her canteen aisles at a reasonable price. It was common and a dreary day. The steam climbed high into the sky, making artificial clouds in the late afternoon sky. Yawning. I watched the vapors twist and float high into the sky before dissipating into nothingness. The metal belt kept moving along at a quick pace as the tubes above carried candy pieces into large vats and containers before dispensing them onto a belt to be packaged down the way. My job was a simple but tedious one. I was responsible for regulating how much candy got onto the belt and if it was ever too much, it would block up the machine and worse things beyond that. Scratching my nose and rubbing the sleepiness out of my eyes with an orange furred paw, I tried my best to fight off sleep as my vision drifted from the glass panel to the belt and back to the panel. Occasionally, I would take on a can of energy boosting drink off the console, remove its metal lid and take a sip of the sugary liquid. Despite its name, no one really believed that it would give us energy. Rather, it only ever made the conditions worse and hurt the teeth. But we were addicts all the same. As I had my eyes pitched close with the rim of my lips, downing the rest of the insufferable ambrosia, I swear I could hear the noise. The problem was that in between the roaring machines of the factory world, you could distinctly make out all sorts of noises. You could just never tell where they were coming from. A sound of machine grinding up the candies to pieces could be as easily from your machine as four machines down. It was almost impossible to tell where it was coming from. And I was hearing a sound. I pulled the can from my wet and maw, not caring much that a bit was dribbling down the fur of my face as I looked around for the culprit. I would have to act fast or whatever was causing the problem would turn into a real headache. My eyes scanned over the area from one machine to the next. There wasn't anything that immediately gave it away, but the noise still persisted. My feet carried me away from the console. Where was it? It was out there, but... Oh, oh no. I could see the steam rising from my machine. The sound was rhythmic and came in bursts, like a metal crunching into itself. I ran forward to hit the stop button, but it was too late. Steam was rising up out of the machines. The belt was stopped. I walked forward to get a closer look, but I didn't enter the fog culminating around the area. One of the fixers more than likely saw what was going on, but I'd have to go find one anyway, just to be sure. I started to walk away. There was another noise, 
He was something like an animal stuck somewhere. My body turned back around. My hand went for a flashlight in my pocket, but the beam hardly penetrated through the mist. It wouldn't be the first time something made its way in here, but it would be the first time I saw one get caught in the machine. It was rattling. He was thrashing against the inside of the metal. There was a crack and something like a bark or more like a gurgle. It was spitting, rancid kind of noise from something that sounded like it was in great pain. Something popped. I heard bolts and pieces of shrapnel fall to the ground as I backed away from the fog. Whatever it was, it was strong. There was a thunk as it hit the floor and coughed up a grunt as it did. I could almost see it. There were colors all wrapped up in each other in that hot, wet cloud. It rolled around for as a moment before setting itself upright. I tried to move my feet, and as I did, I got its attention. I tripped myself up and fell on my chest, then flipped myself over and tried to crawl away, backing away as I could. I could see it skitter across the ground on its uneven legs as its multicolored and bulbous body kept nearly falling over from its sick movement. It ran towards me. I cried, no, and tried to guard my face. Yet, it didn't hurt me. As I looked up, there it was in front of my face with the head of a push broom stuck in its mangled mouth. As my view followed the handle, I saw a man in a stained shirt holding onto it with one hand. Uh, don't worry, I already told the mechanic what happened. He tucked the handle of his broom under one arm and pushed the thing back with a single hand. And the other, he cracked open an energy drink that splattered a bit of its contents on his palm before downing the entire thing. I asked him with a shaky voice, who, who, who are you? He looked over his shoulder with a creased brow and simply said, Matthew, janitorial division. He cleared his throat and looked down at the critter that was attempting to chew its way through his cleaning implement. He called back to me, I'm guessing you've never seen a crud muncher. Nasty little things. They spawn out of the machines when the mechanics get lazy and don't clean the machines properly. The negative energy from the workers mixed with the neutral magics of the spirits starts inhabiting candy residue in the machines and these things pop out. He talked and I could hear more noises. There were more of them in the machine. I saw another flash of color and screamed out, Look out! Without even cocking his head, he lifted the broom with one hand and slammed the head of his broom down on the jumping creature, burning the two onto the hard concrete floor. He looked down to his worn makeshift weapon and told it, Here, hold that. Letting go of it, the broom held the two things in place. The broom obeyed his command. It obeyed his command as he reached into his back pocket and pulled out a plastic bag. He pulled the mouth of it open, banned it in the air a few times, and it floated there for him as he tossed his can inside. Then he pulled the broom up with the two monsters still biting at it and knocked them into the back with his fist. He's done this before, clearly. He treated them like nothing could be more normal. Picking up the bag and walking back to me, I could see the two creatures trying to fight their way out to no avail. My jaw was slack. But I felt better knowing someone just came along and took care of those things. His eyes met mine. He looked back at the place where they came from and then back at me saying, Uh, yeah, uh, there's probably more of those things in there, so I would stay back. Then he looked off to a random direction and gave a high-pitched whistle. Nothing happened. Then I could hear it, rolling. Something was speeding its way to us from far on away on wheels. The sound of sloshing water overtook the sound of still running machine. I saw it. It was a janitor's mop bucket. As it got closer and closer, it started to skid to a halt in front of the man. He pointed down to it and said to his bucket, You stay here. I'll be back to clean the rest up after the mechanics are done. Then he looked down at me. It's not your fault. You didn't do anything. Anyway, I'll be back in a minute. Then the human walked off with his cargo in tow, probably going off to dispose of the two live monsters. That was the first time I ever saw a human. But after that, I think I believed the stories. I think I believed that humans had a hand in building this place. After all, 
Even the brooms and buckets answered their beck and call. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnold, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.